Have you always wanted to improve your Minecraft experience, but have always been let down by Mojang's horrible optimization? Well, this video intends to be the definitive guide for improving your performance and quality of life on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Whether you're on a high-end gaming machine or your grandma's laptop, with that premium McAfee antivirus. I can guarantee that after following all of the tricks in this video, you will come out with an improved and streamlined experience. We are going to be very in-depth when it comes to these optimizations, so I will include timestamps and cards that you can skip to if you don't feel like some optimizations are for you. The first things we will do are some low-level hardware optimizations using the UEFI or BIOS, depending on how old your PC is. If you have RAM that is a higher frequency, it is important to make sure that you have a good XMP profile. This can help your RAM run at its maximum speeds and squeeze the most performance out of it. The next thing is making sure you have resizable bar support. This is a feature in RTX 30 series or above, so if you have a card and a system that's compatible, make sure to enable it. The next thing is mainly for laptop users. Most gaming laptops come with a battery saving feature called Optimus, which intends to save battery but can destroy your performance. This may have different names such as graphics mode or hybrid graphics. I have provided a link that describes how to disable Optimus on most laptop brands. The next thing we'll be doing is some optimizations at the operating system level. The first methods are tools that you can use on your current installation of Windows. These tools focus on debloating Windows and optimizing settings and configurations to remove background processes and improve your privacy. The tools we'll be using for this are Chris Titus's Windows Utility, Hellzerg's Optimizer and Home Control. So to start, the first thing you need to do is to open Windows PowerShell and make sure you open it as an administrator. The next thing you're going to do is going to type a simple command. You're going to do irm chris titus.com slash win, then that little line, and then invoke expression, and it will bring up the Chris Titus's Windows utility. Now this utility is very useful for a variety of reasons. It is very robust and it is made by a professional who has been in the sector for like 20 years, probably even more. The main thing we'll do here is we'll go to the tweak section. Now this is where we can activate some important tweaks that will help optimize our windows. So what I recommend is to make sure to create a restore point because in case anything breaks, you'll be able to revert your system back to how it was before. Run O and O shut up, disable telemetry, disable Wi-Fi sense, Disable activity history, disable location tracking, disable home group, disable storage sense, disable hibernation. And if you don't care about Xbox game DVR, you can disable it, but I use Xbox messaging, so I'll keep this enabled. And you can set services to manual. Now what you can do is add a ultimate performance profile. Now this is a profile that changes the power settings on Windows to focus on maximum performance. If you're on a laptop, it is not recommended, but if you don't care about your battery life, you can go ahead and add the ultimate performance profile. What we'll do is disable power throttling. This setting is mainly for laptops and it stops them from powering down, which could reduce your performance and stopping it from lowering the speed of your CPU and other hardware. A lot of these are miscellaneous tweaks that won't really improve performance that much, but they will improve your experience in general and will cut down background processes. We can do show file extensions, set display for performance, Disable UAC, disable the notification tray. We can remove Microsoft Edge, set the classic right click menu. This is for Windows 11 and disable mouse acceleration. This will make aiming a lot more smooth and consistent. If you have added the ultimate performance profile, you will need to activate it in your power settings. The easy way to do this is to do Windows and R to open the run dialog and type power config dot CPL. Now this will open up the power plan settings for your Windows PC and you can go ahead and enable ultimate performance or whatever other power plans that are better. I use the Hone power plan but if you don't plan on using Hone then you can use ultimate performance instead. Now the last thing we'll be messing with is Windows update settings. It is important to disable some Windows updates when tweaking your PC because a lot of the times when Windows updates it will revert a lot of the modifications that you have made and will reinstall bloatware. So it's a good idea to disable uh, updates when you can. So you could do the security recommended settings. This will keep make sure that you keep your antivirus up to date, but it won't install useless Windows updates that will bloat your PC. 
The next thing we will run is the Helzerg Optimizer. I think this is a really good tool and it's super sleek and easy to use. So just make sure to follow what I do here and make sure to enable everything that I do. So the first thing we'll do is optimize performance. We will optimize network, disable error reporting, disable compatibility assistant, disable print service, disable fax service. Come on, who the hell uses fax machines these days? Disable sticky keys, disable smart screen. If you're on an SSD, you can go ahead and disable Superfetch. If you do use a hard drive, I don't recommend disabling Superfetch. These things are really dependent on what software you have installed, but you can go ahead just in case. Disable Office Telemetry, disable Firefox Telemetry, disable Chrome Telemetry. This will disable telemetry from the Google Chrome web browser. You can go ahead and disable NVIDIA Telemetry. This will stop NVIDIA from sending your data to their servers and disable Visual Studio Telemetry. Now you can disable telemetry tasks, disable media player sharing, disable home group, disable SMB v1 and SMB v2. Now go to the Windows 10 tab and there's some more tweaks that we can do to optimize our performance and reduce background processes. Make sure to disable my people, enable long paths, disable TPM check. This is useful if you are planning to update to Windows 11, disable sensor services, remove caster device, and now on the privacy section, you can disable telemetry, disable Cortana, enhance privacy, disable start menu advertisements, disable edge telemetry, disable edge discover, and enable gaming mode. This doesn't really have much of an effect, but you can go ahead and try it if you have good results from it. You can disable the Xbox game bar. That's if you don't mind not having Xbox functionality. You can disable Windows Inc, disable spell checking, and pretty much that's all you need to do here. Now the next thing is UWP apps. Now a lot of the time Windows forcefully installs UWP apps that are impossible to uninstall. So this tool makes it really easy to uninstall UWP apps that you normally can't get rid of. But if you see any UWP apps that are, are bugging you and you can't get rid of them, just make sure to check them and you can click uninstall. Now for startup items, this will show the files that are in your startup folder. It is a good idea to look through here and see if there are any startup programs that are lurking around here and make sure to disable them if you do not want them starting up in the background. If you have loads of apps that start up when you boot up the PC, this will mean that it takes a lot longer to boot up and will mean you have more background processes. So make sure to disable unnecessary startup items. Now this brings us to the last tool, which is called Home Control. Home Control is an open source command line tool that comes pre-bundled with all sorts of optimizations that can help improve your experience on most games. And the first thing we'll be doing is going to optimizations. Now we'll press one for that. And as you can see, I already have a lot of these on because I've used this tool in the past. So just make sure to copy what I have here. If you have a setting that you want to enable, just make sure to type the corresponding number for it. So say you wanted to enable the home power plan, you would simply go ahead and type one and you would press enter for that. And I will go on to page two. This involves a lot of network tweaks and a lot of miscellaneous tweaks. Now, if you're a more advanced user, you can go ahead and use Atlas OS. Instead of having to use all of those tools I showed previously, Atlas OS is a modification of Windows 10 that is de-bloated and has a lot of enhanced privacy features and also extra features to improve performance and a lot of tweaks here and there and a lot of minimized background processes. Now what good is an optimized version of Windows without also having optimized drivers? This is where driver tweaks come in. I myself have a NVIDIA graphics card, so I will be showing the NVIDIA driver tweaks first. What we are first going to do is download NV Cleanstall. Now this is a tool that allows you to customize your NVIDIA drivers and choose the driver version you want and also de-bloat them. I will be providing the best settings for NV Cleanstall to get the most smooth and streamlined drivers for your hardware. Now by default, the NVIDIA drivers come with a lot of extra bloatware that you might not actually need. Stuff like GeForce Experience and Shadowplay, you already have good alternatives to Shadowplay, just use OBS man. But you have stuff like Telemetry, which also collects your data and spies on you, which is always good to remove. So for this installation, we're going to have a very streamlined driver. We are going to use the recommended settings and disable physics, we don't need this. All we need is the display driver and HD audio via HDMI. So once you've done that, just click next. After that, just make sure to disable installer telemetry and advertising, enable unattended express installation, 
and show expert tweaks. Disable driver telemetry. This will stop NVIDIA from sending your data to their servers. You can disable HD audio device sleep timer. Enable message signal interrupts. This is basically enabling MSI mode. Now for this, you'll choose all processes in machine and interrupt priority. Make sure to set that to high. Now, if you play any games that have easy anti-cheat, it is recommended to enable this and automatically accept the driver unsigned warning. This will make sure that your driver is compatible with easy anti-cheat and will make sure that you will not have any errors or kicks when you're trying to play games. Now after this you are pretty much good to go. Just make sure to click the install button and it will automatically start the installation of your debloated NVIDIA driver. Now for AMD GPUs it will be a bit more tricky for me as I don't have an AMD graphics card but I have learned a bit about the AMD drivers. First of all it is better to install the pro version of the AMD drivers and not the adrenaline. The pro drivers come with a significant performance enhancement and they're just more stable around the board. And I've also provided a video in the description which will give you the best AMD driver settings for the best performance and stability. The next part of driver optimizations is getting the best settings for them. For NVIDIA graphics card, you will need to install NVIDIA Profile Inspector as I have made a pre-optimized profile for it that you can import and automatically have the best setting. To do this, you will download the NVIDIA Profile Inspector and once you have this opened up, make sure to go to the top of the screen where it says Import Profiles. You can go ahead and import the profile that I have provided which will automatically set your NVIDIA driver settings to the most optimal for Minecraft and other games as well. Now once you've done this, make sure to click apply changes as this will apply the changes to your driver and just to be safe, make sure to restart your PC. Now for AMD and Intel graphics cards, I have provided video links in the description that will give you the optimal settings for both of those. As I do not have an AMD or an Intel GPU, I can't really do this on my own so I will link some videos in the description that will give you the best settings for them. The next tweak is incredibly simple to do and it involves editing the Windows registry. In the description I have linked a registry edit which will make Minecraft always run in high priority mode which means the CPU will prioritize Minecraft and give it better latency. The most important thing that you do first is install Minecraft Bedrock Launcher. This will allow you to modify the game's files with ease without needing Ayube Unlocker or any other third party software that just makes the process a lot more slow and inconvenient. So what we can do first is apply some basic optimizations to the Minecraft executable. It doesn't really matter what version you choose but for this one I am playing on 1.20.0 so I'll be choosing this one. In the Bedrock Launcher it makes it really easy to find where the game's files are. So you'll open this and you'll look for minecraft.windows.exe. And once you've found this, you're going to do properties, compatibility, make sure to change settings for all users and disable full screen optimizations, change high DPI settings and override high DPI scaling behavior performed by application. Make sure to click OK and apply. Minecraft is a very CPU dependent game in a lot of cases. Having really low Minecraft settings will mean an imbalanced load on the CPU and GPU, meaning the CPU has to work really hard while the GPU isn't doing anything. The settings I'll show you should work pretty well on most PCs. So in video settings, brightness is optional, this does not affect performance, but make sure that you hide paper doll and turn off screen animations, this is a very useful tip. FOV again doesn't really matter that much but keep in mind that the game uses frostrum culling meaning that a higher FOV means more chunks in your field of view meaning slightly lower FPS. I use 75.6 as I think it's a sweet spot. View bobbing again doesn't affect performance this is personal preference. Make sure that you turn off camera shake, fancy leaves, render clouds, keep beautiful skies on you will need this to see your custom cube maps, keep smooth lighting on this does not affect performance. Fancy graphics does not affect performance either, it's better to keep it on to make the game look good. Now the main things we'll be doing is render distance. If you are on a high end PC, I suggest keeping it no lower than 10. If you're on a decent PC, you can play with 16 chunks and most servers support this render distance at a maximum. So this is probably the best sweet spot if your PC can handle it. If you're on a low end PC, I'd suggest going between around 8 or 6 chunks. This should give you good performance on a low-end PC. Just keep in mind that everyone's PC is different and some render distances might actually decrease your performance. Now max frame rate it is important to set this to unlimited. Minecraft's frame rate cap is not good and it is extremely inaccurate. 
If I were to cap this to 240 right now, you would see in game that it's actually capped at 60, around 65. So if you actually want to cap your FPS, I suggest doing it in the NVIDIA control panel. This will give you an accurate cap and in some cases can improve stability. Now the last thing is anti-aliasing. Make sure that you have anti-aliasing turned all the way off. Now the most important tweak I'm going to be showing you is switching the game to DirectX 11. DX11 offers huge performance benefits when compared to DirectX 12. I'll be showing you a comparison between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Now Furzide, how do you achieve this may you ask? It is as simple as putting one DLL file next to your Minecraft executable. And it's simple as that, it will just work. In the description, I have linked this awesome DLL file that you can download and use in your game. All you need to do is download the DLL file, it should be named d3d12.dll and simply put it next to your Minecraft EXE. Now after you have applied all of these optimizations, you should see a significant increase in your performance, stability and latency. Keep in mind that I can't guarantee any improvements as everyone's hardware configuration is different. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this guide and I hope it works well for you and I'll see you later.